one other thing that Will was talking about, the fire itself was uh, examined. They had a hearing by the town members, but it was the town fathers who were the businessmen who had tried to get the Imperial Powder Plant to come to town. And so, in my opinion, it was a whitewash. In about a half an hour, they held their coroner's inquest and determined there was no fault at all on the part of the powder company. I think that was a sham. I think most of the people in the town knew it was a sham, mm -hmm. that these girls were essentially killed by bad working conditions. And everyone felt guilty about it, and so no one said anything about it. That's why there are so few records. They were embarrassed that this happened. And this was the time that it really did need more labor protection, and that's what got things started in all of the Washington state. They pointed at this particular thing and said, we've got to start enforcing these laws. We can't let this happen again. So in a very real way, that one little plot where these girls are buried means an entire lot to the entire labor movement in the state of Washington and the protections that workers have had since then. Now, I had no idea about these girls. I had a health issue back in 1993. It was one of those things where the doctor said, start putting your affairs in order. And I wasn't ready to do that, but and I went up onto the cemetery grounds where I'd helped uh, volunteers from North, North Fork Grange, I believe, or, uh, well, Logan Hill Grange, excuse mm -hmm. me. They had an annual cleanup of this place, and I would help them out, but they were getting older and fewer, and it was getting harder, and so I found myself on the grounds there and decided to make a deal with God, and I basically said, mm -hmm. you keep me alive, I'll clean this up. Let's put it back the way it was a hundred years ago. Because you couldn't, other than the clearing, it was barely as big as this room, you couldn't see into the brush. It was so thick and heavy that no one could walk in there, and maybe there are a few trails. And so many of these headstones in the current cemetery were unknown. So we cleared out. We cut some trees, had people come in with excavators, and one foot by one foot pulled up the brush to see what was there. We found headstones, we found markers, we had all kinds of things we located that were never located before. And once we had it up, we had 26 house-sized piles of slash that we burned on that, which tells you how thick it was. Once we were done with that, I noticed there's kind of a, I was planning on mowing it after, and I kind of wanted to, there was a hump there, and I thought, can we scrape that hump off? Because when we were up there working, old timers would tell me about these five girls that were buried, well, the eight girls that were killed, five in one grave, and they never had a headstone. So I was thinking, well, we'll find a headstone. And no, there's no headstone. There's only a one foot wide marker around the five graves. We never saw any trace of it. So if we were taking this one hump down, I said, let's get that down so I can mow better. And as we were going through, the bucket hit something. And we started digging out, and here was the, it still breaks me up, the one foot wide cement border around five graves. And so we, we found the girls, or they found us, whichever the case may be. So, but that's all that there is, is that border around there. And now here we come up to the 100th anniversary. It just seems like we should do something. So we have been talking about raising money. And we have an account. Anyone who takes a check made out to the girls to any security state bank, they will take it, put it into the fund. We've had 33 donations. We're now at roughly $3,000. So the donations have been coming in at almost $100 a piece from just everyone. I don't know who the people are. These are all anonymous, just the way it is done. But we felt it was necessary to have the community contact with these, and the girls maybe contact with them. I, whatever your spiritual beliefs are, I will not trample on that, but there's something happening here that is beyond what the few of us who are working have done, and it's marvelous to see that. All right, on the picking of a memorial, we wanted to have a big headstone. I mean, let's make this thing huge. Unfortunately, we have some limitations. Working with Daniel LaPlante of Stickland Funeral Home, through his suppliers, they say that if you're going to get something that's six or seven feet wide, the, you're starting at 20,000 and going up, and the handling of it is impossible because you need really heavy crane equipment to go in. We've only got 150 headstones with over 500 burials, so it means there's 350 unmarked graves. We dare not take heavy equipment across there because at some point they could fall in, we'd have equipment problems, and so no one wants to go in. So we can't have a really huge one. But we came up with a plan. We thought, what about three individual headstones? And we'll just group them together. 
and that will be about seven feet wide, and that will give us the kind of marker we would like to have. The second thing that happens that says that's a good idea is that if you custom order a headstone, you will get it approximately February of next year. It takes five, about five months. Actually, the stone is cut in India by the Chinese, shipped to China, then shipped to the U.S. There's no U.S. stone cutter. I mean, what's going on with this country? Where are our jobs? Well, that's another story. Um, anyway, we, so we can't even get a bigger headstone. We have to go with what is in existence now. So thanks to Daniel, we went through all the inventory in the Pacific Northwest, and we've located three stones that we think that would do very well. I have actual photos of them. This is a drawing, but what we'd like to have is a white marble. Now you're the first ones to see this, by the way. No one else even on our committee has seen this. A white marble cross in the center, approximately three feet high, and two black uh, granite stones on either side, which will have the names of the girls printed on them, something on the white cross. I think we might tuck them a little closer together, like this, which makes a little bit more of a unit than the others, and we can have the bases cut to do that. But the fact that it's three pieces makes it very easy to handle, and we're going to put a cement base, about a four by eight foot base, a foot thick, under them, so they will be mounted, steel rods put down so they can't be tipped over, and yeah, so it'll be absolutely safe there. And I have actual photographs of the pieces of stone that we're going to be using for that. Uh, Stickland is buying the stone for us at their cost, which means they're making a donation of about $6,000 because the three stones are going to cost us $6,000 plus installation. Well, including installation. So they're taking it at cost, which is wonderful. But they don't have to do this, but they're doing it for the cause for us. But even at that price, we are $3,000 short of our goal, and we have the cost of the cement slab to put underneath it. The stones will be visible from the intersection of Bishop Road and Market Street. There's a clear shot down to them, and we want them elevated enough so they'll be seen. Enough that people can find them, but not enough that it's going to attract attention, because in the modern day, uh, it's like anything you put on that's an attractive nuisance, kids will come up and see what they can do. For the first seven years I owned the cemetery, we still had vandalism almost on a monthly basis. Someone would come up and tip over a headstone. So I finally decided to live on the premises. Just having the house there overlooking the place has kept the vandalism almost to zero since then. So I think we're safe there. Long-term plan for the cemetery is to have it operating again as a cemetery. That's going to take another probably $200,000 worth of investment, and so we're we spend until we're out of money, and then we'll spend some more keeping going. We're going to try to make it an operating cemetery, so this ground will be protected, and these girls will never be forgotten. That's our goal. Anything you can do to help will be greatly appreciated. 